Ada. Ada Byron, as she initially was, Ada Lovelace, as she became. What was so special about her in terms of her education, her genealogy, if you like, her genetics? What was so special about her that enabled her to do what she did? Well, this is not strictly computer science, but it's a good story, and it does have some marginal relevance to all of this. Ada's parents were George Gordon Byron. He was born in 1788. I'll put the first name of his wife in quotes. Actually, she was christened, I think, as Anne Isabella, but she actually liked to run the two together and he lied them into Annabella. So that's why I put the quotes around Annabella Milbank. They got married in 1815. And you can work it out. I mean, that would mean that Byron was 27. She was actually 23. And very shortly after getting married, they had a daughter. And Byron chose the name Ada for her. You know, short, to the point, poetical. Ada Byron, born 10th of December, 1815. She was the only legitimate daughter of these two. Now, I can only apologise again and say I have to say something about particularly her father because it explains so much about Ada and how she was educated the way she was. Lord Byron was unbelievable. He was the Victorian bad boy par excellence. George Gordon Byron was like an amalgam of Hunter S. Thompson, you know, Sean Penn, Charlie Sheen, Keith Richards maybe, all of the bad boys. And it, had there been a gang of them, a Rat Pack, he would have been the leader, most definitely. Indeed, he, one of his many, many girlfriends for George Byron was a lady called Lady Caroline Lamb. Some of the oldies of my audience will have seen the movie starring Sarah Miles. And famously, Lady Caroline Lamb characterised him as being mad, bad and dangerous to know. He writes like a housemaid on the verge of the vapours. Not mean to write like Alexander. Lord Byron was famous at Cambridge for keeping a pet bear in his rooms. And when he later declared himself to be a poet, and he was a very good one, he went off to Italy to see his poetical friends and had them visit him. People like Shelley and Keats and stuff like that. Shelley recounts that when he found Byron by the sea in lodgings, the staircase was occupied by six pet peacocks. It was this kind of excess. It was sex, drugs and rock and roll, except no rock and roll in those days. So it was sex, drugs and poetry. If he'd had a Rolls Royce, it would have been in a swimming pool. Is this oh, what yes, 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 yes. Because he was like that, and because he left his wife immediately, five weeks after Ada was born, and they'd only been married earlier that year, that Annabella Milbank thought he was the devil incarnate, had no time for him, and was worried stiff that daughter Ada might grow up in the image of her father. So to try and head off trouble at the pass, it was decreed that Ada's education could cover things like non-fiction English literature, geography, botany, mathematics, physics, chemistry, Nothing that involved the emotions. The thing that was absolutely banned in her education was poetry. That inflamed the passions she might start taking after her father, and then heaven knows what would happen. So Ada, unusually for a, uh, a woman of breeding in early Victorian era, had a very rational scientific upbringing. She had mathematics tutors, and later on, actually in wanting to become an even better mathematician she did ask well she not only took up with babbage as we'll find out but she also asked for recommendations for other tutors and one of them is a person i think i have mentioned on computer file already augustus de morgan who came up with the rules of the logical algebra later known as boolean algebra so she had de morgan of de morgan's rules fame as one of her maths tutors and she was serious about becoming ever more uh, devoted to mathematics. Think about it, 1815, she was a society lady. She lived with her mother, and a large proportion of living with her mum during the year would be in London in rented lodgings, yes? Her mother 
was reasonably well off. She was a minor league sort of heiress in her own right. They could afford that, okay. But young ladies of breeding, really up until about 1970, in the society circuit, had a, <laughs> had a ceremony almost of what was called coming out. What it meant is you were a debutante, you were a young lady in society who hadn't been formally introduced to the people who mattered in societies. So you had coming out balls in fashionable London. And these were attended by the Queen because, of course, by the time you, uh, uh, by the Queen or the King, when you add 17 onto 1815, 1832 was Ada's coming out ball, where she met the predecessor to Queen Victoria, who was King William IV, I think, at that time. But anyway, as part of this coming out, she met, at one of the events, a certain Charles Babbage. And Charles Babbage invited Ada and her mother, Annabella, to come and visit him at his house, meet his wife, and to be shown this miracle of mechanical engineering and mathematics, uh, only part constructed, but we're just waiting more funds. Difference Engine Mark II. And Ada was completely captivated by this. She thought it was wonderful. And she and Babbage became, shall we say, firm friends, corresponded very, very regularly. They kept in touch. But in order to explain how it all came down in the end to this analytical engine, it goes roughly as follows. In the early 1830s, uh, Ada still only 19, she corresponded a lot with Babbage about his difference engine Mark II, asked for recommendations for maths tutors and so on. Late 1830s was occupied by the fact that in about 1835, I think, Ada met another gentleman from high society called William King, married him. They fell for each other, whirlwind romance, mid-1830s. So the late 1830s, as you can imagine, was spent on William King's Somerset estate in the process of being domestic and having three children. And fortunately for Ada, very unusual in the Victorian era, they did all survive. And she herself did not die in childbirth. Minor miracle in those days. But by early 1840s, she'd had her three children. Of course, they were well enough off. They'd be looked after by governesses, nursemaids, and so on. She uh, decided that she would like to get back into mathematics. And it was at this late stage that Babbage, without actually formally publishing it anywhere, had come up with the idea of the analytical engine. Either keep it in the CPU, or if you want... Babbage, of course, would have been the first programmer, in a sense, of his analytical engine. He'd have come up with the design, and he'd done pencil and paper exercises about, with that design, will this actually work? But don't forget, the analytical engine was not built, has not been built, and will cause huge problems in being built. However, the spec could be obtained, and it was very, very impressive indeed. So, why didn't Babbage publicise this more? Why did Ada and others have to find out almost by knowing him personally? The answer is, Babbage was thin-skinned. Think back to my story in early videos about Newton and Gauss. They were thin-skinned, couldn't stand criticism, couldn't stand the unwashed criticising the great thoughts, but like Newton, he hated publishing. If you published, then the great unwashed would start telling you. The Boeotians, I think it was called, by Gauss. Same thing with Babbage. He was so thin-skinned, he could not take criticism. And worst of all, he stopped giving lectures because people misunderstood them. And worse still, he got heckled. So it was no use asking Babbage to give a lecture to the Royal Institution or something in London about his analytical engine. Not going to do that. However, he was invited to go to Italy. And I think he was probably a member of the Italian equivalent of the Royal Society. So he went over by invitation in the late 1830s to give a talk on his analytical engine. A person there called Luigi Menabrea, an engineer with a good maths background, who later became Italian Prime Minister, actually, took copious notes and wrote up a paper published in a French journal, not an Italian one, amazingly. Well, Ada got to hear about this and got hold of a copy of it and decided that she could rework it as translator, add a lot to it, do it better and explain it to an English audience. So this is where the whole issue comes of Ada as computer programmer. Yes, she really, really did understand 
every nuance of Babbage's design, she had to in explaining how this program worked, in no doubt writing programs of her own. And I think what always impresses me about Ada, when you read her copious notes at the end of this paper, beware, it's in Victorian English, it is heavy going. She and Babbage and the rest of the Victorians would never use six words where 36 would do. All sorts of subjunctive clauses, oh, it's hard work, be warned. So anyway, um, in part of her end notes in this, she lets her imagination run free and she says to people, you know, have you thought, could this wonderful engine of Babbage's compose music? Now that really is good lateral thinking because Sean and I have stood there at Bletchley Park or sat there in front of my computer here at Nottingham when we were doing the Ackerman function and jokingly said to ourselves, ooh, it's thinking when the result didn't come out. And somehow that's not too difficult a thought to have when the thing is electronic and humming away. But to have the thought of this crashing great analytical engine being driven by steam, going bang, crash, bang, bang, to think of that as a thinking machine, I think does require a big leap of imagination. So yes, she had glimpses of the future. There's no question about it. She really did. Even more so if you think that it's actually just on paper at this stage. Oh, yes. She's seen some cogs from other things he's done. But. Yes. Later on, after her sort of tragic death, Babbage, when he wrote his own autobiography, referred back constantly to what he called his enchantress of number, i.e. Ada herself, and this, this wonderful paper. Oh, and another lovely Babby story. I love this one. She consulted him while she was writing this paper and he thought it was wonderful, but came up with a great idea, which you can guess. Wouldn't it be a good idea, my dear, if as well as this paper, I were to write an anonymous preface to it and flame the establishment and the grant givers for not giving me enough money to actually build it. And she knew him well enough by this time. She adroitly avoided doing that. I mean, Babbage's idea that so long as it was anonymous, nobody would guess who wrote it. It's just unbelievable. Anyway, that's how it all ended, because the trouble was, and the really tragic thing for Ada was, as the 1840s wore on, her health got worse and worse and worse. It's now believed that she actually died of cervical cancer. I think she didn't actually die till 1852. By that time, her mother had moved in with her and her husband, uh, William King, Earl of Lovelace on their Somerset estate. But a week or two before Ada died, oh, eruptions began all over again because she, uh, she called William King her husband, apparently, according to Stephen Wolfram's blog, and I believe this, he's researched it well, and told William King something that made him very, very upset. This has not been recorded what it is. She insisted that when she died and she knew death was inevitable, that she did not want to be buried on the William King Earl of Lovelace estate in Somerset. She wanted to be buried next to her father. And this, if you like, is where the local bit comes in uh, for us here in Nottingham. Her father, George Gordon Will Byron, um, when he wasn't uh, being mad, bad and dangerous to know, had also actually inherited from a very distant Byron cousin the whole of the Newstead Abbey estate. Now, Newstead Abbey is a stately home just north of us here. Byron loved inheriting this. Lord of the manor, stride around, sword in hand, you know, order the workers what to do next. Be a man of, uh, of a with country estate and, uh, and with all my learning and my <laughs> breeding as well. Only trouble was, the family was virtually bankrupt. They couldn't remotely afford to run the Newstead estate. What little money Byron had was spent on sex, drugs, peacocks and poetry, you know. So it never really got off the ground and I think fairly shortly thereafter, maybe even before Byron died in 1828, the estate was sold and left the Byron family completely. But Newstead Abbey was there 
and it brought with it, of course, the rights of the family grave. Byron himself was buried in Hucknall Parish Church, and Ada said, and upset her husband and her mum mightily, I want to be buried next to my father in Hucknall Parish Church. Fortunately, due to our friends and colleagues in physics and 60 symbols, we're able to refer across because they paid a visit to Ada and her father's tomb in Hartwell Parish Church and have done a video on it. And up there on the wall is the plaque commemorating Ada Lovelace. But of course she's not buried up there, um, she's down here in the family vault, or actually this is just the entrance to the family vault. At the funeral, again it was a small affair, but really telling was her mother did not attend. Uh, I think probably furious at her daughter's wish to be buried next to the hated husband, Lord Byron. Babbage was appointed executor of Ada's will, but he didn't attend either. Read into that what you will, but I think one can certainly say that in the past, in Ada's past, she was a troubled soul in many ways. There were probably goings on of various sorts that we can only speculate about. And yet, um, there's no doubt about it. I, I don't want to underplay or overplay Ada, but she was important. She really was. She, she got it, in a sense, about software and what software could do. And I think she sort of could transcend the unbelievable limitations of the hardware that would have been limited even had it ever been built and could see beyond that. She could see beyond that to a future of computing for its own sake, if you like. That local link has been very important to us as part of the bicentenary celebrations of uh, Ada, you know, December 2015. Everybody labelled everything the Ada Lovelace Laboratory, the Ada Lovelace thing. Our excuse for doing this, we've labelled our first year lab as the Ada Lovelace Computing Laboratory, is that there is this local connection. I don't know that she ever visited Newstead Abbey. She probably lived in London most of her life with her mum, and I bet you her mother, if there'd been any talk of a trip to Newstead, would have vetoed it, because it might have, you know, taken you too near to that man or something like that. But yes, that is our local connection.